elk, elk, everywhere. So how did Estes Park and Rocky Mountain National Park become so overrun with elk? Has it always been that way? Today we're exploring the elk and human interaction in the Estes Valley. We'll talk with a local historian and a wildlife biologist to try to help answer that nagging question. What's up with all the elk? We are here today at the Estes Park Museum with Dr. James Pickering. He wrote some of the very informational books on Estes Park history. Welcome, Dr. Pickering. Thank you, Emily. Dr. Pickering, tell us how the elk first disappeared from the Estes Valley. Adler Sprague, one of our earliest pioneers, tells us that in the 1870s, the elk came down from the mountains by the hundreds in the fall. But by 1900, they were all gone because the early settlers hunted them for food. But more importantly, every fall, the hunters from the valley would come up, hunt the elk, and take them down to Denver and the other front range towns and sell them for their meat. When were the elk reintroduced to the valley? In 1913, and again in 1915, uh, Mr. Stanley and Mr. Hondius and the other residents of Estes Park pooled their money and they bought two small herds of elk from Wyoming in the Yellowstone region, brought them down by train to Lyons, uh, and then put them on the backs of Stanley steamer cars in cages, brought them to Estes Park and released them into what would then become 1915, the National Park. Tell us how the elk came to be overpopulated. Those two small elk herds began to multiply very rapidly, and they did that through the 1920s. And part of the reason that they multiplied so quickly was the National Park Service and our own park here had a policy of getting rid of the predators, particularly the mountain lions. And so there was nothing to stop those elk from uh, multiplying, and they did. And so by 1931, less than 20 years after they were introduced, they began to leave the park in numbers. And that's when we began to notice that they were down here in the village and not just in the national park. We knew that there was a problem uh, because farmers began to, to report that the elk were in their fields, in their haystacks. And of course that hay was what they were raising to so they could live on here. And of course the elk remain one of our greatest assets we know a lot more about them now than we did certainly back in 1913 and 1915 when Mr. Stanley and Mr. Hondius brought them back to Estes Park. From what I learn about the elk, I am afraid Estes Park will be overrun with animals of that kind. And we may have to get Roosevelt up there to help reduce the number. We are here with Dr. Rick Spowert, who is an expert from the Colorado Division of Wildlife. Thank you, Emily. Dr. Spowert, are the elk in the Estes Valley overpopulated? Currently in this game management unit, GMU 20, the elk are not overpopulated. We might have a distribution problem, which would mean at certain times of the year, we probably have too many elk, or as I like to put it, too much of a good thing in Estes Park. Can you tell us what CWD is? CWD are the initials for chronic wasting disease. It's a, a neurologic disease that's always fatal, and uh, CWD is in the uh, deer herds, elk, mule deer, white-tailed deer, and moose uh, in, in Colorado. How does the DOW monitor the elk herds in numbers? We do several things. Uh, uh, every year we have elk uh, classifications and counts. We, we count not only the total number of elk we see, but we have marked animals, and by using what's called a Lincoln Peterson index, we can get a really good idea of the total number of animals since we can't always count the total number. We also classify elk, which means we look at cows, calves, or young of the year, and bulls and cows. So we have a, a cow-calf ratio and a bull-cow ratio, and we plug all this information into a computer model that spits out what our elk population is doing. We also plug in uh, to that model elk harvest data. We have 10 elk hunting seasons in Game Management Unit 20, and uh, that's how we monitor and manage populations uh, statewide. Biggest, uh, baddest predator that is missing in the park is uh, humans. Prehistoric man hunted in Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, the Utes and Arapaho hunted in the park. And European man, when they settled in, in Estes Park, uh, unfortunately, with the advent of uh, gunpowder, extirpated or you know killed all the elk in, in the park, and that's why they had to be reintroduced from Yellowstone. But um, as far as the missing predators, not only wolves and grizzly bears are missing, but um, uh, human predation uh, is missing in Rocky Mountain National Park. Can you tell us how we're supposed to respond to the elk when we come in contact with them? In Estes, the elk are very human habituated. They're used to being around people and people sometimes don't realize they're wild animals and they get too close, and especially during the spring when the, 
the cow elk have their babies, they can be very protective and we've had a number of people injured by uh, protective uh, cow elk in the spring. And then in the fall during the rut, uh, the breeding season, uh, bull elk will oftentimes uh, chase people away from their harems. And uh, so the main thing is, is to, you know, give them a, a healthy distance. And if you're disturbing them at all, they'll let you know. They'll change their uh, activity and, and you know that you've gotten too, too far. The best way to photograph them is to use a telephoto lens and you don't have to get right in their face.